Hey everyone, this is Pete Lesperance from Harem Scarum, and you're listening to Metal Wani. Mr. Pretty Lesperance, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. Now, how's been the day so far for you? I think it's just started, isn't it? Well, it's uh, 10.59 here. I just, uh, I've been up since about 6 o'clock. I just got back from the gym, so the day is going very well so far. Fantastic. Now, how excited and, and let's say nervous are you for your new album, 13, which is just, I think, around 15 more days left for the album. I think so. Yeah, it's uh, it's coming. It's coming close. Uh, very excited, actually. As usual, I mean, the most exciting thing about releasing a new album is finding right. out what people think of your new music. You know what I mean? Is hearing the feedback from the fans. So, yeah, very excited. Uh, yeah, a little bit nervous, maybe, but uh, mostly excited. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Now, fans have heard few singles. So what sort of response have, you know, they provided to the new album? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's hard to say, really, because people have only heard bits and pieces, but uh, we have had some feedback and even some feedback from some media places. And, uh, you know, it's uh, everybody seems to think it's up there with one of our best, surprisingly, for our 13th album. Oh, awesome. So, uh, yeah, so it's really good. So we are very excited. I mean, and frankly, we're very excited about the album itself, like... You know, we, we took a long enough time away. We did mm -hmm. took a nice chunk of time off. So I think even writing wise, you know, we were very rejuvenated coming coming back into this project. And I can truly say, I mean, in my humble opinion, I do think it's up there like with our top, definitely up there with our top albums. Amazing. Now, what makes it even better is that this is your 13th studio album and you named the album as 13. So any luck factor or some story associated with it? Uh, not really. Uh, no, not really. Uh, 13 is uh, interesting enough. 13, 13 has, uh, has some significance for me. Mm -hmm. I was born on the 13th. My wife was born on the 13th. You know what I mean? Things like that. But no, it just happens to be our 13th album and we're not superstitious or anything like that. <laughs> so it just made a lot of sense. Normally we go with, uh, normally we, we pick a song title off the record. Right. And then, you know, we go from there. But at the time when we when we were starting to put this whole package together and everything, we couldn't we didn't find anything in the song titles that we thought would make a great, uh, great album title. So we just said, well, hey, why don't we just go with the number of the album? You know, it's and it's uh, it's been good so far. Amazing. Even Megadeth did the same with their 13 album by titling it as 13. Oh, did they really? So did Black Sabbath, I think. Actually, I think Black Sabbath, I think. It was their 19th album, and they yeah. called it 13, it's something like that. Kind so. of invalid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Now, you know, the fans are definitely counting their days for the new album. And, and, and it's really great to see that you guys started a trend on the internet called 13 Weeks to 13 to yeah, promote yeah, the album. Yeah. So how was this idea and the concept come into the picture? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, times have changed in the music business. Uh, label involvement is a different thing these days. And, I mean, we do have label involvement, obviously. We have Frontiers in Europe right. and for, right. for the rest of the world. And we also have uh, Marquis Avalon in, uh, in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, but we also wanted to try our hands at a bit of the independent thing because we saw the way other bands were doing it with the Pledge Music thing. And... It was just, it seemed like a really, really great way to connect directly with your fan base. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And that way, you know, you get direct emails from people that you know are fans of your music, you know are willing to put the money down and buy the albums. And, and it's really very, very valuable from a, from a, you know, from a band like us, from our perspective. It's amazing because we get direct communication with fans from all over the world, which is really like, you just can't say enough about that. The fans Exactly. Are... It brings the fans to and the band together. Now though they contribute money and you guys come up with great music. So it's more like you know, that face-to-face that -face scenario between fans and the band actually makes them even closer. 
Exactly, exactly. And I mean, you know, I think we have very open personalities and we we talk very frankly and, and normally with our fans. And I think they really appreciate that. You know, I really think it gives them a sense of maybe more of who we are as people as well. And, mm-hmm. and it, they, they can get more invested in it then because Absolutely. it's one thing to like a band, but I've always found, you know what I mean? If I, I might like a band or an artist and if I meet them and they're a dick, mm-hmm. then that's kind of over for me. <laughs> you know, right. I'll, I'll stop listening to their music to that point. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I like, to, I like to think that we're, uh, we're nice enough guys that, <laughs> you know, that, uh, that it works out for us with our fans. And so far it definitely does seem to be that way. So. Right. So now since we're talking about fans, now there are fans who are going to listen to the interview and going, you know, what's that, that exciting factor on this album, which fans are waiting for. Well, I mean, I hope it's I hope it's here in the tunes. You know what I mean? I hope it's uh, from a fan perspective. Anybody that ever liked Harem Scarum, I would think is going to love this record because I think it combines a lot of what we've always done. Um, you know, it's dark, but not too dark like Voice of Reason. Uh, it's it's old school harem scarum, but it still has a modern twist at moments. You know what I mean? I really think it has something for for everybody. And to me, it feels like a very up positive record. You know what I mean? And right, right. you know, a lot of our fans in the past have kind of been put off when we've gone a little bit too dark or a little bit too. You know what I mean? Minor songs, minor keys. This this album to me just feels. If it feels new, energized, and if 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 anybody ever liked Harem Scarum, I think this is going to be one of their favorite albums. So phenomenal. Now that's your take because you are a musician, but for me as a fan, it had that lush melodic elements and and you know the vocals stand out really cool and that magical effect that you guys always provide is still there. But what actually you know made it even better is the the amount of emotion. You know, the amount of emotion which is present on the album and it's it's much more than how it's been before. Now that sort of uh, that that emotional connection with the band, with the music makes it even better. And that's what your fans are eagerly gonna wait for. Oh, uh, that's exciting to hear because that well, again, for us, from our perspective, we feel that way about the music. I mean, me and Harry, when we were working on this, we were looking at each other just going, Man, this just doesn't feel like the last, <laughs> you know four albums like which you know obviously we're always into it and we're always enjoying it but i think i think at the end of our run like when we finished hope i really just think we were done we were out of ideas right, it was right. it, and it was starting to i mean i you know obviously we always try very hard to make sure the songs are great and that we do good work you know what i mean we always try to do that but i don't think it i, I think every album is different and i think you nailed it i think this album is it doesn't sound like mood swings, but it's similar to mood swings in the way of the intent and the, yeah. like, you, like you said, the emotion that somehow happened on this record. I think we captured, you know, a time when the band, or well, the band, it's me and Harry, really. I mean, when, <laughs> right. when and Creighton Doan and Darren Smith, obviously, but I mean, you know, we were really excited to make this record. And instead of just making a harem scarum record, we were actually really into it. And I really think that comes across in the music. Absolutely. Now that, that freshness on the album is also due to because things might have changed since you guys were on a break, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Without the break, it, it would never have sounded like that. We had to get away from it. And also we had just done the Mood Swings 2 tour. Mm-hmm. So we had reconnected with fans all over Europe, in Japan, and it really rejuvenated us, I think, to see that level of excitement from our fans 20 years later about an album we did. And we really wanted to give them something like that again, you know, really exactly, give them an exactly. album that they can get behind and go, that's the harem scarum that I love. You know what I mean? Absolutely. We wanted to do that because everybody has wanted us to make mood swings for 20 years, <laughs> you know? So I think this is about the closest we've come in concept. Now, it doesn't sound like mood swings, but we sound 
excited and hungry like we did on Mood Swings. Absolutely. You know? And that's where the, you know, the picture comes because uh, when a band makes an amazing album, and when I say amazing, I mean like a, a part-defining album, fans kind of expect that same thing to be rehashed every time. No, for you as a musician, it is impossible to, you know, to do that continuously because you want to grow, you want to evolve over the period of time. So how do you deal with that sort of, you know, that, that sort of feedback or that sort of expectations from fans? Um, it's difficult. I have to say, you know, uh, how much people have loved the Mood Swings record has been a little bit of a double-edged sword for us. Right. <laughs> because <clears throat> it's amazing. And we're thrilled that people like anything we do. But every single time, and I'm talking for, you know, what is it, 11 records, people right. like I've always had this expectation and hoping that we were going to make something like mood swings or, you know, we would hear the fans complaining about, oh, well, yeah, it's a little bit dark and it's not really like mood swings. I really liked mood swings and I don't uh -huh. like, this. you know, and I always say, and what I, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I always say that those people aren't necessarily harem scarum fans they're mood swings fans right <laughs> yeah. absolutely and, that, and that's totally fine too like i said you know i'm happy anybody has ever liked anything that i've done so but uh you know we uh we definitely it, it definitely is some pressure and it has definitely been frustrating at moments trying to live <laughs> up to that record for whatever reason um no matter how much we like to think that we just ignore everything and do what we want to do, you're obviously influenced by your fans, as you should sure. be, because they're the reason you make music in the first place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, that comes to the, because you released the 20th anniversary remake of Mood Swings. Now, was that a conscious decision to do? Because, you know, an amazing album, a masterpiece in Harem Scarum's discography, and then three new bonus tracks and 20th anniversary. So was it more like, okay, let's remake the album or you could have remastered it. I mean, what sort of a you know, decision was taken uh, during this process? Yeah, no, we, uh, you know, we, what happened really was um, we, we were on, we were talking, Harry was having a conversation with uh, the, a gentleman we know, a good friend of ours, Kieran. He's a guy who puts on Firefest, you know, okay. you know, Firefest, okay. of course, right? Mm -hmm. So Kieran was saying, Harry was talking to Kieran and he said, so what are you guys going to do for the 20th anniversary of Mood Swings? And we said, it's the 20th anniversary of Mood Swings? <laughs> we didn't even know, really. So, uh, you know, it, it kind of started from that conversation. It turned into, he, he asked us if we'd be interested in coming and doing Firefest and, uh, and doing the Mood Swings album in its entirety. So that's kind of right. where it started. And then we thought, well, what should we do? Maybe we can do a re-release. Well, we can't do a re-release because Warner owns it. So we just decided to re-record the whole thing. And also, I mean, I like to think, in my humble opinion, I, I truly believe that Mood Swings 2 is far, far, far superior to Mood Swings, sonically. Mm -hmm. And I think that we fixed everything. Well, personally, we fixed everything that I didn't like about the original Mood Swings. Right. So, yeah, it just snowballed. It just turned into, hey, let's do one show. Okay, maybe we record the record. Okay, let's do a tour. So it just snowballed and turned into what it turned into, which, you know, again, got brought us back to a place where we went, wow, you know what? We still have a lot of fans out there and we right. still love making music and we should, we should do another album. It's been a long time. So me and Harry sat down and we just said, let's try to write some songs. And if we like what we write, we'll just keep going until we're done a record. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. Amazing. Now, you know, back when the band called it a day, I mean, what made you guys think like, you know, no going forth is just bad for us and bad for the band? Now, this is something many young and old bands do face and suffer to tackle the situation, you know, maturely, unlike you guys. Now, how did yeah. you come to the conclusion that it was the right time to call it the day? And then again, what made you guys join hands once again? Well, like I said, you know, it was, uh, as far as getting back together, a big part of it after, I mean, you know, the Mood Swings record aside, it was really reconnecting with the fans. Mm -hmm. It was re reconnecting with the fans and seeing, you know, on a small but worldwide, you know, basis, there's fans all over the place. Right, <laughs> we don't have right. millions and millions of them, but we do have them all over the world. So it, it really just rejuvenated us. And we were, you know, we had been away from it for long enough that we thought we should get back and do this because basically because we wanted to and we enjoy working together. Now, at the time we stopped, 
is our 12th studio album. And we had never stopped. We started in 1991 with the first record. And every year, year and a half, we released another album. Right. Now, when you think about that, that, that is a lot of time. It's a lot of songs. I mean, we released over 150 songs before, yeah. be, before that point. You know what I mean? I was out of tricks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I was, I was bored of the music we were making in a way. I mean, we always tried very hard to make sure the work was good and the songwriting was good. But in all honesty, I think with the hope record but i think after that we were just done we had just said everything as you know songwriters me and harry at that time together we had done everything that we could do with harem scarum it mm -hmm. wasn't really it really wasn't fun anymore i mean we always enjoyed working together we got tired of hearing it doesn't sound like mood swings it doesn't sound like mood swings so it just there was a million reasons that we just went you know what we should probably just pack this in now you know but that's the, that's the great thing because you guys came out with fresh ideas, you know, that, you know, cleared up all the mess which was there in your head. And then we, we got 13. So eventually, you know, what happens happens for good. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and if we had wrote 13 and it was shitty, <laughs> then, <laughs> then we never even would have done it. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you know, you guys, you know, you especially started off as a guitarist in a, in a, in a Ushawa metal band called Minotaur before that's forming right. Harem Scarum. Now... Yeah. During the hiatus, you also came out with a solo album called Down In It, and which was only released in Japan. Now, since, you know, the Japanese fans are crazy and probably your main fan base is in Japan itself. It's true, so, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you've done a lot. You've been touring. You have your own studio in Ontario called Hope Song. So, so many things have happened in your life. How has been this entire experience like? Yeah, wow. That's, you know what? Honestly, I just feel lucky. I just feel lucky because I've had a 25 year career in the music business. Right. I have, I have never, you know, I never got rich. We never, you know, we're not flying on jets and we're not uh, living in mansions, but uh, it's been really good to me. You know, it's been uh, my whole life. I've been able to do what I love to do every single day. You know what I mean? So right. I, I cannot complain. Harem Scarum never became Bon Jovi or Def Leppard, but we became just big enough and me and Harry did enough. We produced our own records. We recorded our own records. I even did our artwork for a long time. Like we did everything. We were self-sufficient and basically kept all the money and, and survived and True. survived True. well for a very long time because we did everything on a very independent, you know, do it yourself kind of level. Yeah. And honestly, it's been amazing. I'm 46 years old and here I sit you know, in my home, in my studio, I'm not at work. You know what I mean? It's great. It's been, it's been amazing. We have nothing to complain about. Harem Scarum has been very, very good to us. Absolutely. Now, apart from that, industry has changed a lot, like we discussed earlier. Now, it, it, for, as a fan, I mean, of course, for you as a musician, there is, you know, you guys have to provide much more than just music now, looking at how things have changed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's uh, it's the direct connection with the fans, you know, fans expect a lot more from you than they ever have because right. they right. because they get it from a lot of artists. Now, the problem is fans expect. I mean, again, and this is not this is not in any way to sound like a complaint, but the unfortunate reality is uh, you, you were expected to do twice as much now. You know, when we first started out, I was a guitarist songwriter and then across along the way became guitarist songwriter engineer producer, <laughs> producer. artwork guy now multimedia guy doing videos for youtube doing you know what i mean and it just grows and grows and grows and i always say my big joke is i got it i started playing guitar because i didn't want to play with computers <laughs> you know what I mean? but it's it's come full circle and it's uh it's it's def, it's a full-time job that is it's very difficult to get paid in these days right. you know it'll still suck all the life out of you you still have to put as much time and effort into it as you ever have if not more but mm -hmm. the rewards are so much smaller i i just feel so fortunate that i was around at a time and it was even at that time i remember when we started in 1991 when we did our first album Everybody was talking all the doom and gloom about the music industry and how, oh, my God, we're only selling platinum now. We're not selling triple play. You know what I mean? 
that was the big complaint at the time. And we thought, oh, that's too bad. This is really bad. We had no idea how bad it was going to get. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm sure all the musicians, you know, in the 80s definitely didn't expect this to happen. I mean, Internet is a boon as well as a bane. Yeah, no, exactly. It's uh, it's uh, it's been a shock. It's been a shock to everybody, from labels to artists to everybody. But the bottom line is, there's just no changing it. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. <laughs> it, it is what it is, and we just all have to live with it and deal with it. And if if you don't love music enough, or music doesn't love you enough to keep you in it, I guess it's time to get a day job. <laughs> Absolutely, very well said. Now, what are the plans of taking this album live? Because that's where the magic happens. Fans want to see this happening on stage. Well, and we want to see it happen too. I mean, you know, like I said, the Mood Swings tour was very well received. Uh, everybody was happy. Fans were happy. Promoters were happy. We were happy. Uh, and we haven't really got into conversations about the next tour yet. Mm -hmm. It has, only, I mean, it's only been a year since we were in Europe, but uh, we're still talking about it. We're starting to put together some stuff. It's looking like there may be a few Japanese dates in uh, May, potentially. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be looking at doing some stuff in Europe as well in the uh, late spring. So we're hoping to get it out there and play to as many people as we can. Because, frankly, when we did that on the last tour, we remembered how much we love it. And like I said, to get out there again and connect with the fans and connect with the people that really still are into our music and get it. It's amazing, you know. And it's Absolutely. Just, yeah. Now, you we're have to tell me this because you're coming to Japan in May. Now, yes. Japan is pretty much very close to India. Yes. So what are the plans? Because, I mean, I don't know how, I mean, how much idea do you have about your fans here in India who keep following your music and, you know, even buy the CDs all the way from US and Europe just to have a physical copy of Harem Scarum. Wow, really? Well, in, in all honesty, I, I know nothing about our fan base in India. I, it's, it's, it's never really been on our radar because we've never, you know what I mean? We've never had contact with, with a lot of fans from India. It's, so we really don't know what's happening there for us. Right. I completely understand because I've been hearing the same from majority of the musicians because, you know, the main focus of business is generally U.S., Europe, and a little bit in Australia. So... Yeah. That's where, you know, we come in, have a chat with the bands and try our best to make sure we can do something and get you guys here and play. But definitely, you know, it's not the end. We are going to be seeing you guys in life very soon. Well, you know what? We would love that. If there is if there's promoters in India that are interested in having us over, they should get in touch with us because when we come over to Japan or whatever, if we can work it out, man, we would love to come and play India. I've always wanted to go to India. Fantastic video. Now, well, I just end the interview with a simple question for you. Say, why should your fans buy 13? You can just tell it in a line, a small message to the fans that why your dedicated fans should buy the album. Because if you ever liked Harem Scarum, you will love this album. Hey, you just nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Fantastic, but I had a great, great time with you. I look forward to, you know, see you guys on road, at least in Europe and hopefully in India soon. It was an honor having a chat with you. Oh, thank you so much, man. And thank you very much for the interview. And I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It's my first one in India. So thank you very much, man.